There's another law, like called, um, and which is a law of a divine love, called the law of repentance, and that also only operates upon the human soul. It doesn't operate upon any other part of the universe other than the human soul. And the highest laws that God created all operate upon the human soul. But the law of repentance is a law re linked to the law of divine love, the laws regarding divine love, and as such are higher than the law of compensation in their operation. So in other words, if you're not sorry for what you've done at the heart level, then you will have to pay for what you've done to the nth degree until it's completely paid for, and that's what the law of compensation will demand of you. Whereas the law of repentance says, if I am sorry, completely sorry in my heart for what I've done, and I'm repentant, I don't want to do it anymore, and I really have a feeling about that inside of my heart, then God's love can flow into you and take away the law of compensation operation on your soul, and what that means then is that the law of repentance is greater in its operation than the law of compensation. So all the laws have a hierarchy of operation, every one of them. And the highest possible laws are those that operate upon your soul. They're the highest laws of the universe. And they are the ones where most of us are totally unaware of and they are also the ones that cause the most unhappiness for the human soul. So as people, it's because of our lack of awareness of the laws of love that causes the majority of our own unhappiness. Right. Now, just to give you a, an example of that, if I have a disease, let's say I've got a disease like maybe heart disease. Right. Well, heart disease is actually something that is being demonstrated in my physical body. So you could say there must be a law of cause and effect operating with regard to this heart disease. In other words, the effect is the heart disease and there's got to be a cause. Now, unfortunately with the way people on earth work is that we assume the cause is, oh, I've got a blocked artery and, I've, you know, like my body just isn't functioning properly and I've been eating too much cholesterol and, and all of those kind of things. Um, but the problem with that kind of thinking is that it doesn't address the cause. It just addresses the effect. There's a reason why you eat the wrong food. And the reason is actually got a cause. Does that make sense? And it's not that that food's got a lot of cholesterol in it. There's a reason why you like food with a lot of cholesterol in it. But who goes for butter rather than margarine? Uh, most people do, don't they? Just about. So why is that? because there's something inside of their body demanding it. There's something inside of them emotionally demanding it. And our body just responds to our emotions. So, so at the end of the day, you could say that the heart disease is the effect of some other cause. And if I find what the cause is, then I'll cure the effect, whatever the effect is, whatever disease I have. Now, everything that happens to our physical body is the result of some cause. Even when you have an accident, it's the result of some cause. But the cause isn't that you were in the wrong place in the wrong time. You see, God made a perfect universe and you're always in the right place at the right time. Even if you have an accident in that place, you're in the right place at the right time. Because God didn't create an imperfect universe. So everything that happens in the universe is perfectly operational. So that means that if I have an accident, even if an, the accident causes my death, there is a loving underlying cause for that accident, and that is one of law, God's laws. So everything that happens to me has a loving cause in the sense that everything that happens to me is the result of either my living in harmony with the law of God or living in disharmony with the law of God. The problem for the human race is the majority of us don't know what most of God's laws are, so we don't know how to live in harmony with them. But ironically, there is a measuring system, a feedback system, particularly for these laws, there's a feedback system, but for all of the laws, the feedback system is, is pain. So, so with every law, the, the result of its breaking of it breaking is some pain at some level. So, for example, let's look at the law of gravity. 
The law of gravity is a law that only affects the physical uh, location in which we live. Right? It affects not just the human body, but also every other thing that has mass. So the law of gravity is effect, and and even if we're in deep space, there are gravitational pulls affecting us, although they might be very slight, they are affecting us. So the law of gravity does have an effect everywhere in the physical universe. Now let's look at what happens when we break the law of gravity. Now to break the law of gravity, it's just a matter of being in a place that's high off the ground, should we say, and we fall and we fall too far for our physical body to cope with the trauma of it. And we've broken the law of gravity in some way. So just my getting up here, I'm not breaking the law of gravity yet, am I? I'm, I'm potentially going to break the law of gravity. And then as soon as I jump off, I'm now attempting to break the law of gravity, but because it wasn't very far, it's not going to have very much effect on me. But if, if this was the side of a 10-storey building and I just jumped off, obviously uh, it would have a lot larger effect on my body. So that's the law of gravity. The law of gravity, when I break it, causes some physical pain. It's telling me that actually you went too far here. And you went so far that your own physical body could not co cope with it. Now, there might be a number of reasons why I broke the law of gravity. One might be that uh, somebody pushed me over the edge of the building. And the other one might be that I jumped. In other words, I committed suicide. And the other one might be that I accidentally fell. So I was on a ladder or something like that and I accidentally fell. Every one of those situations, you broke the same law, the law of gravity, and there will be an effect in every one of those situations of breaking the law. There will be an effect. That's the law of the physical. But with those things I mentioned, if I chose to break the law of gravity knowing that it's what its effect would be, in other words, if I jumped off a 10-storey high building hoping to die, there's a soul-based law now that kicks into it. And the soul-based law is about the sanctity of life. And as soon as I break that, so I'm not only breaking the law of gravity now, which caused my death, which I might have felt would is a good thing, right, if I'm suiciding, but I've also broken a soul-based law, a soul-based law of the sanctity of life. And the soul-based laws always have a law of compensation uh, effect. In other words, there will always have an effect on the soul that damages a soul that needs to be released in some way for breaking them. And that's what the law of compensation demands. So the law of compensation is not the same as the law of cause and effect. And the law of cause and effect is not the same as the law of attraction. They're all very different to each other. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's just a brief outline. I'll give a talk about the law of cause and effect in completely and you can get a picture of what it is.